I made a DIY waterfall for my bathroom. Warning, this is not a how-to tutorial. I made a lot of mistakes along the way and learned a lot of lessons, which you'll see. The idea of making this waterfall for my bathroom came about because we have a basement bathroom that could use a renovation. It needs a new shower and sink and a few other like cosmetic updates. It wasn't really in the budget or the time and plans to really make those upgrades for a while. So I thought this might be a great opportunity to do something crazy and unexpected with the space. I started with the piece of insulation board that I had left over from another craft project. I measured the space that I wanted to install the waterfall and I cut the foam board to fit. You can find these sheets of foamular insulation at hardware stores. I then started to carve out the sections where I wanted or thought the water would run. The water ended up having some other ideas. I found the foam board to be much harder to carve than I was expecting. This was the first time I have ever attempted to make anything like this, so it was definitely a learning experience. I'm calling this a waterfall fountain because it's supposed to look like the water flowing down the side of a hill in the jungle or some other tropical place. So this is what it looked like with the center carved out. I then used Great Stuff spray foam insulation to create what would become the rocks. This is what it looked like before I carved it. I then took a knife and started to carve the rocks. I found this kitchen knife at the Dollar Tree. It worked really well to cut through the spray foam. This part of the project was messy, but fun because I got to design how the rocks would look. Before I could finish carving the bottom, I had to figure out what the base of the waterfall would be. I ended up using the bottom of a plastic tote container to be the water basin that the fountain pump would sit in. So then I had to build a base to hide the tote. I then repeated the process that I had used on the wall panel to make the base look like a rock. I covered it in spray foam and carved it. I had to make the base so that it could easily be removed so that I would be able to get in there and clean the tote and change the water frequently. Okay, so this is what it looked like after I got done carving them. This was the initial design. The final design ended up with some modifications, which you'll see. The next step was to cover the pieces in concrete. I ended up using concrete patch. However, hydraulic cement may have been a better way to go for this project, but I didn't know that at the time. Before I covered the project in cement, I planned out how it would be attached to the wall. We ended up drilling holes in the project for where the screws would go. I put straws in the screw holes so that they wouldn't get covered with concrete. I then started by applying a thin coat of cement to the whole project. I used cement to cover it because I needed it to be waterproof and I was hoping the texture of the concrete would give the rocks a more realistic look and feel. Painting is not my strong suit, so I didn't know if I would be able to fake a rock look with just painting it alone. Here is what the concrete looked like while it was still wet. And this is after it dried. You can see some little cracks and lots of little holes where the concrete didn't cover the foam completely. So I then went back and added a heavier second coat of the cement to the project. This time it covered much better and was a lot stronger. Though my final piece does have some cracks, they aren't really noticeable and don't seem to be a problem, though I don't know if they might get worse over time. I wanted to paint the project with a waterproof paint. So I got a sample size of some indoor outdoor paint from Home Depot. I went with this really dark color because I wanted the center where the water was going to run to look like it was wet rock, even when the fountain was off. I then went in with some gray acrylic craft paint to paint the rocks. This craft paint is not waterproof. Since I was using it on the parts of the fountain that wouldn't be getting wet, 
I didn't think it would be an issue. However, the waterfall ended up having a little bit of a different idea. Here's how it turned out. This was my first time ever making something look like it's a rock, and I was pretty impressed with how it turned out. I think a big part of that was from the concrete. It gave a lot of texture, which made painting depth into the rock easy. I then repeated the whole process of covering the base in cement and painting it. Here's what it looks like painted. So I originally carved out a channel down the whole back of the waterfall panel um, to be able to run the tubing for the fountain pump up the back of the project. But that idea ended up not working out because we couldn't get the angle of the tubing right at the top to be able to get the water to flow down the front of the panel. Luckily, the bathroom already had an access panel to the inside of the wall. So we decided to drill a hole in the top of the wall and one at the bottom and run the tubing through the wall instead. Oh, and yes, the bathroom has now been painted green. So once the tubing was run through the wall, we installed the waterfall panel. Ran the pump electric into the wall and added a 90 degree elbow to the top of the pump tubing. I was hoping that the water would just run out of the tube and make its way nicely down the waterfall. Um, here is a clip of what happened the first time we got to try it out. We're going to try the first run of the fountain. Dun dun dun! Me too. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Where is it? Oh no, that's not, that's not it. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted. The water only hit the waterfall panel in certain areas and then basically just ran onto the floor. I'm sure some people watching knew already this was never going to work, my husband included, but I thought it would. So I had to go back to the drawing board and make some modifications. I started by making a spout at the bottom to funnel the water into the tote. I didn't want the spout to be visible, so I made the rock um, taller at the bottom to cover the spout. We also had to rework the tubing at the top. We ended up drilling little holes into a piece of the tube so the water would come out slower and not just pour out into one area. I also had to add a little ledge or step um, at the top here to catch the water so that it would slow it down and direct it in the right direction. Each time I would make a change, the water would do something different and run over areas it hadn't previously ran. So I finally had to build up the edges of the rocks to create channels to direct the water and keep it from running up over the rocks. And here is the final project. This project almost beat me. It took me about two months to finish and I was ready to give up a couple of times, but I really did learn so much from the mistakes and failures that in the end, it was worth it. I love how it turned out. I really wanted to do something crazy and unexpected. Um, and I think that in the end, I accomplished that. I will also be putting out a video that shows more of the transformation the bathroom took to go from this dingy basement bathroom to this immersive jungle themed bathroom. So be sure to check that out as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.